I believe this could be one of the most important videos that you will watch. It will deal with the renewing of the mind. It will deal with changing your mind, proper steps and practical ways to do that. So many people today live in pain and suffering in their own mind. They're in prison in their own thoughts. Instead of taking thoughts captive, they are captives of their thoughts. Instead of thinking on these things, the thoughts are doing thinking on its own. One time a mother took garbage and put it on her son's plate and he was upset. He said, why did you put garbage on my plate? And she said, well, if you're willing to put garbage into your mind, you shouldn't have a problem eating some of that with your dinner. And there could be the state of you perhaps today. Maybe you're battling with that. You know, you must understand that your life cannot change if your mindset doesn't change. According to 3 John chapter 1 verse 2, John says, Beloved, I pray that you may prosper in all things and be in good health just as your soul prospers. I want you to see that John says that you can prosper and be blessed in all things just as your soul prospers. Your mind is a predicament. Your mind is that indicator for the blessing in your life. We are transformed by the renewing of their mind according to Romans chapter 12 verse 2. So let's dive in. How do we see change in our thought life? How do we renew our mind? How do we see transformation in here in our own thought life? Number one, you can't change your mind without taking responsibility for your thoughts. I have another video that deals with seven types of minds and how there are different moments in our life that the enemy wants to use to turn into a mindset, meaning we go through worry and he wants to make it take root into us so that we develop a mindset of worry. Bible calls that stronghold, conviction, this particular attitude and a fantasy. And see, you can't change your mindset without first taking responsibility for your thoughts because a mindset takes a while to develop but once the person becomes passive and lazy with what they fill their mind with then whatever their mind is filled with becomes their mindset over time. You know each country has borders and we have a border patrol that kind of monitors who's getting in and who's getting out. We check their passports, we check you know if they have the legal documents to be in the country. I wonder what would happen if we would set up borders in our thought life. Which thoughts are trying to get in? Which thoughts are intruding? Which thoughts have no passport? They have no legal documents to being, dwelling and taking root in our mind. So many of us, we allow terrorist thoughts in our head and they bring down buildings, they bring down our dreams, they bring down our peace, they terrorize us at night. Even when we are by ourselves, we don't have peace because we absolutely have no borders. We absolutely have no walls, we have no patrol. Just kind of our mind is just whatever happens. You can't change your mind if you don't take responsibility for your thoughts. Number two is you have to take care of your brain. To see change in your mind, you have to also give attention to your brain. Now we must understand is your mind does the thinking. Your brain is what you think with. The relationship between brain and the mind is like the relationship between a piano and a pianist. A pianist cannot play piano if piano is not playable, if the keys are broken, if it's not connected to power. Same thing, your mind cannot think if your brain is malfunctioning, if your brain is broken, if your brain has, you know, chemicals that are missing. If your brain is damaged, there are people who have brain injuries, accidents that they had in their life and today they have a difficulty functioning. Certain body functions cannot function because the brain is really sends those signals and those things are damaged. Some people damage their brain through drugs and even though they're delivered from drugs, the consequences of that are still there and they have to take certain medicines and they have to take certain supplements so that they could keep certain chemicals balanced in their brain for them to function. And some people, you know, abuse alcohol and they do other things but some of us we just eat poorly. We don't eat healthy food. We don't sleep enough. We don't exercise enough. We don't breathe enough of fresh air. We don't listen to birds enough. We don't hang out with other people enough and therefore it damages our brain. So then your thought life really is also affected because your brain has been neglected. So to take responsibility for your thoughts, we also have to move into taking care of the keyboard, if I could say. Yes, you can be a great pianist, but if you don't have a great keyboard, your gifts and skill set will be limited. So take care of your brain, get enough sleep, eat healthy food, avoid accidents, stay away from drugs, stay away from things that are direct damage to your brain. And if you've had an accident, if you've had a, some kind of an injury, you know, believe God for healing for your brain. Number three, get out of your head. What I mean by that is you have thoughts, you are not your thoughts. This is huge. There's no way that you can see change in your mind until you take responsibility for this one truth that God commands you to do. Think on these things. Philippians chapter 4 verse 8. Finally, brethren, whatever things are true, whatever things are noble, whatever things are just, Whatever things are pure, whatever things are lovely, whatever things are of good report, if there is any virtue and if there is anything praiseworthy, 
meditate on these things. You are commanded to think on particular things. In Proverbs 23 verse 7 it says, for as he thinks in his heart so is he. So you're doing the thinking. The thinking should not be doing you. But see a lot of us what we did is we gave up and we became lazy and we stopped thinking. We stopped deciding our thoughts. We just let our thoughts think on their own. Bible clearly states that we should not live in our head. We should live through our head, meaning we are a spirit. We can choose our thoughts. I know sometimes may feel like my mind does all the thinking by itself. I can't stop it. It's like a car that has no brakes. Well my friend, you have an e-brake. Today that e-brake is your spirit. You can pull the e-brake and you can stop all that mess that's going on and say, wait, I am not my thoughts. I have thoughts. I am a spirit and I can control my mind. I can choose my thoughts because the scripture tells me what to think on. The Bible would never expect of me to think on these things if I am out of control. If the thoughts are the ones controlling me. If the thoughts are the one that are ruling my life. No, it says for me to decide my thoughts. For me to rule my mind. My mind is not my master. My thoughts are not my God. My thoughts are subject to me. They're my servant. My mind is my servant and I have to discipline it, train it. I have to direct it. I have to navigate it and I have to choose my thoughts and not let my mind do the thinking but choose those thoughts and when my mind misbehaves when my mind you know crosses the line or something I pull it back you are in charge of your thoughts stop living under the rulership of your mind take authority of your mind and of your thoughts and do what the Bible says you are a spirit stop living in your head number four capture your thoughts before you can make them captive a police cannot arrest someone they don't catch I was in the gym today and there was this sign in the sauna that says that if you pour water on one of the sensors and you are caught, you will lose your membership. Now, you know, if they don't catch you, you don't lose your membership. Same thing with criminals. If they're not caught, they can't be arrested. Same thing with bad thoughts. If they are not caught, they can't be made captive. What do you mean by catching your thoughts. What I mean by catching your thoughts is that you have to become aware of your thoughts. Take a seat back, kind of withdraw yourself, let, let the mind think and then observe what's going on. Why are these thoughts constantly there? The thoughts of negativity, rejection and loneliness. When did they start? Why are they constantly living in your head? Who planted them? Why is it always they're triggered by these particular circumstances? Is it because there are circumstances around you or are these thoughts already affecting the circumstances and giving you its own interpretation? I heard the story of one guy who had some cheese on his forehead and he was in his car, he woke up and he said, man my car stinks. So he went to the store. He's like, the store stinks. He goes outside. The outside stinks. He went to the park. The park stinks. And then he came to the conclusion, the whole world stinks. But in reality, the world didn't stink. He just had some things on his head that needed to be removed. And sometimes that's how our thoughts are. They are running rampant and they make our world stink. But in reality, it's the stinking thinking that needs to be dealt with. And the world, things on the outside can be changed. And we can see it in a different light and in a different perspective. But to do that, you have to really take inventory. You have to examine your thoughts. You have to become aware of them. You gotta catch them before you can arrest them. And to catch them, observe them. What's going on in your head? Observe a particular train of thought that is constantly there. Did your mom have it? Is that constantly coming out in your words? Is this something that runs in your family? Or you're chronically negative? You always criticize, gossip, always worry, always fearful, timid, paranoid, bitter, offended, angry. And these thoughts are always there. And it seems like the whole world is kind of lining up to confirm that those thoughts are real. The world is like that. And maybe it's your thoughts now that are taking your life in the direction of those thoughts. And you can't change them until you catch them. You can't catch them until you become aware of them. Number five, don't focus on emptying your mind. Instead, fill it. Part of new age is emptying your mind, yoga meditation and it's counteractive to what the scripture teaches us. Biblical meditation is very different from Eastern meditation. Eastern meditation empties your mind. Christian meditation fills your mind. Eastern meditation is all about detachment. Christian meditation is all about attachment to God. Eastern meditation is very passive. Christian meditation is aggressive. Eastern meditation is demonic. Christian meditation is Holy Spirit filled and inspired. We see that in the Bible in Psalm 1-2 it says, But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law he meditates day and night. 
I want you to notice it's not passive. I want you to notice that the mind doesn't do the meditation. He controls the mind. He, the spirit, decides what the mind thinks on. And then you direct your mind into thinking about something. Yoga and all the Eastern meditation is all about getting your mind not to think about anything and being empty. And that's, it makes you vulnerable to the demonic intrusion, a demonic attack. That is not Christian meditation. You can't change your mind like that. You can get demons through that. But if you infiltrate your mind with the scripture, like renewing your mind, is spiritual warfare. The weapons over warfare are mighty in God and in that verse Paul is talking about taking thoughts captive. He's talking about subduing things. So there's a lot of warfare going on when you are trying to fill your mind with God's truth. You're combating lies. You're combating things that have been exalted and exaggerated against the knowledge of God. You're combating fantasies and attitudes that have been exalted against the obedience of Christ. You're catching these thoughts like mice. You're, you're capturing them. You're throwing some out. You're retraining some other ones because it's a spiritual war. You have to be active in doing it. There is no way you can change your mind by being passive. Simply just lifting up your hands or moving them like this and trying to be just emptying your head. Do not empty your head. You don't need an empty head. You need a filled head with the truth of God. Joshua 1 8 it says, Let this book of the law not depart from your mouth, but you meditate in it day and night, also that you will observe whatever that is written in it, and then you will make your way successful and then you will have good success. So God wants you to actively engage your mind in the truths of God's Word. Don't be passive. And number six is take every thought captive like a prisoner of war. 2 Corinthians chapter 10 verse 5 and I'm going to read the Passion Translation. I really like the wording of it. We can demolish every deceptive fantasy that opposes God and break through every arrogant attitude that is raised up in defiance of the true knowledge of God. We capture like prisoners of war, every thought and insist that it bow in obedience to the Anointed One. Now let me read to you New King James. It says, For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal but mighty in God, for pulling down strongholds and casting down arguments and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, bringing every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ. I want you to notice this terminology is not passive. This is war. Pretty much what he's saying is that you got to get your weapons. You can't come to a gunfight with a knife. You can't come with just positive thinking, you know, I'm just going to meditate, I'm just going to think, I'm just going to do these stretches. That's not enough. You're, you're dealing with spiritual forces. You can't fight the devil with the devil. You got to fight the devil with the truth of God's Word. God's Word is a mighty weapon. It's a sword of the Spirit and you got to bring your weapons to this war. These weapons are scriptures. Pinterest quotes, Instagram quotes, Twitter quotes, you know, cool sayings, wise sayings aren't enough. You got to take the scriptures. You got to memorize the scriptures, study the scriptures, read the scriptures, obey the scriptures, speak the scriptures. You got to get active. And then you know he talks about not only our weapons but he's also saying that we have to demolish every fantasy that opposes God. We got to catch those fantasies concerning other sex, fantasies concerning you know who you want to be, who you were, you know different fantasies that are just not real and they're not from God. We also have to bring down every arrogant attitude that is building itself against knowledge of God. We got to insist that every thought bows to the obedience of Christ. My friend, we got to court martial our thought life. We got to take authority. We got to fight. And these thoughts have to be prisoners of war. You're either a captive to your thoughts or you take your thoughts captive. So I hope that these practical steps helped you to regain mastery of your thoughts so that you can bring them in subjection to the obedience of Jesus Christ and so that you can see your mind being changed so that your life can be transformed. Which one of these you are going to apply today? Drop that in the comment below. As always, don't forget to smash the like button and then share this video with somebody who really needs to hear that. And don't forget to subscribe if you haven't and click on the bell below. Below this video, there's our merchandise, merchant store. Uh, check it out. In this way, you can become a blessing to this ministry and help to support us. This is one of the ways. Thank you and until next time.